Hello everyone, what's up? In the Race for Terra Hobby Community Showcase, What the Viewers Are Painting, we will not be looking at models which I have painted myself. Instead, we will review models painted on weather recently by subscribers who are also active members of our small but dedicated Discord channel. All of these modelers have found inspiration not only in the Race for Terra videos, but in each other. If you like the idea of a hobby learning community, this video is for you. Our first model tonight is a sinister Black Shields Predator painted by Rick from the UK. Rick was one of my first subscribers and is also a very experienced modeler, which is plain to see in his amazing work on this tank. The first thing I'll bet you'll notice is that the tank isn't really black. There are patches where the black is so worn that you can see an older green layer of paint underneath. Coincidence? I think not. What Rick has done here is follow the narrative that he's created for his army. This is a tank that used to belong to the Sons of Horus and was repainted by his Black Shields when they acquired it. Therefore, Rick first painted the whole tank in the original dark sea green Sons of Horus scheme and even modulated the panels. Then he applied the black base coat and the red stripe, mixing his paints with AK Interactive's washable agent. This technique, similar to the washable camo that you might have seen in my Lemon Rust video, allowed him to create this incredible effect by first dampening the base coat and then applying some friction with a brush. His loving attention to detail is also apparent in things such as the burn effects on the last cannons, the reflections on the lenses, or the carefully weathered tracks. Since Rick is constantly learning new things, this was the first time that he used either enamels or oils. Rick writes, I'm convinced that enamel products are the way forwards for me. I'm naturally quite a messy painter and their technique is just so simple for someone less skilled with a brush and with fading eyesight. <laughs> well, Rick, I think you and I are on the same boat on all counts here. Most importantly, perhaps, Rick explains that for him, and I quote, the biggest leap forwards has been swapping tips and tricks on the Discord server with you guys. So there you go, everyone. Subscribe to the channel now and join our Discord server if you want to follow Rick's example. You'll find this hard to believe, but this was not only James's first heresy model, but also his first attempt at weathering. Coming from more of a heavy metal style background, he changed gears completely and very carefully implemented techniques such as chipping, streaking or enamel washes, and all of them to great effect. His chipping here was quite aggressive, which is very fitting after all for the 14th Legion. The rust streaks, using rivets and other surface details, are also very convincing. For these effects, James used ammo products, such as chipping fluid or stricken rust and track wash enamels. We can also see that he has taken advantage of the enamel washes to increase contrast in all areas without the ungainly tight marks or coloring of panels typical of acrylic products. Regarding the experience, James writes, I enjoyed all the steps, although I did find it a little scary at first, as this kind of painting is totally different to the heavy metal style I'm used to. James explains that his work was directly inspired from the Race for Terra videos and his hands-on advice. Now, James, don't be too modest. You've done Mortarium proud with this one. Our second James tonight provides us with a bit of variety in this otherwise heresy-centric showcase. James's intent was to create, and I quote, a weather-beaten warlord. And I'm sure you will agree that he has definitely succeeded at this he goes on to explain that he focused on learning and deliberately practicing the sponge chipping technique shown off in the video on sponge chipping for World Eater Space Marines. James, I think you've done this very well indeed. Both the red panels on the armor, the shield and the axe have a gritty burnish look that puts me in mind of the Game of Thrones TV show. The great advantage of the sponge technique in this respect is that it not only alters the colors of the panels but also adds texture. Now James doesn't have an airbrush yet, which of course means that achieving that nice red finish was a labor of love for him, and many layers. Regarding the experience, he explains that the most important lesson I learned was that weathering, especially sponging, depends on a good sense of proportionality. He continues, large areas of weathering look really out of place on small surface areas. Learning to control that and focus on subtlety was the most important thing I was able to practice. Like myself, James is a bit of a dabbler, and even though he's starting a 30k force, he also collects Battletech and X-Wing Armada, 
among other things. James, we'll be counting on you to keep adding some variety here. Although Brad's beautiful First Legion squad are also black, you can see that the style he's gone for is very different to that of Rick's Predator. What is very similar, however, is the exacting attention to detail evident in this piece. The careful layering and glazing, the painted in-scale chips, the basing, and, to my mind, above all, the amazing checker work are all testament to this. Knowing fully well what my leanings are, let's say, Brett jokes that he has committed the cardinal sin in the Horus Heresy of edge highlighting the armor. He adds that if he were to do it again, he would use sponge chipping instead. Well, Brett, use whatever you like, please. These are beautiful. I recommend that you check out how he's glazed the red on the bolt guns as well. This is precisely the kind of technique that I couldn't pull off to save my life. So guys, it goes to show that we can all learn from each other. Nick Serastus Knight Atropos, painted in the House Malinax scheme, is without a doubt one of the most impressive models I've seen all year. Since this heavily weathered metal monster is right up my alley, I could probably wax poetic about it for hours. Instead, let me tell you what the highlights, pun intended, are for me. First of all, Nick has brilliantly pulled off the very peculiar mottled yellow bone of House Malinax, as you can see on all the armor panels. For this, he's used a combination of layering, oils and enamels. Without a doubt, this laborious process had paid off. Secondly, the metals have an antique, rusty looks that in my opinion really conveys the impression of a sinister arcane machine from a bygone era. A monstrosity harkening back to the dark age of technology couldn't possibly be clean and shiny, now could it? For the metals, Nick has also gone for a complex recipe of oils and enamels with black, blue and rust tones. Now I would like to mention that Nick has just begun working as a commission painter. If you would like to own an incredible piece like this Atropos, get in touch with him via DM on Twitter. As you can see here, Nick has a really artistic approach to painting. So if you want something that is more than your usual painting by numbers plus some OSL bling that is so common these days, he's your guy. So why a community showcase? Well, as you can see, this channel is not about me showing off what a wonderful hobbyist I am. As I have said many times, I'm no professional or competition painter. But as an educator by trade, you can bet that whatever skills or knowledge I do possess, I am able and willing to share. Free of charge, of course. More importantly, perhaps, I see myself as a facilitator, particularly when it comes to weathering. As Rick stated above, this channel and its associated Discord are ultimately a place where we can all learn from each other, myself included. So, if you like the idea of a hobby community and of tutorials created with us mere mortals in mind, subscribe now and remember, in the grim darkness of the 31st millennium, there is only weathering.